Number 10, charity pledges. The infamous charity pledges. From her initial divorce settlement, Amber Heard was given $7 million. She pledged in court to give the money entirely towards charity, with a few million to a children's hospital in Los Angeles and the rest to a labor rights group. But now that a few years have passed and we're looking more closely at the receipts from this claim, we find out that Amber has donated barely anything to the charity. The labor union testified that they never received the full $3.5 million that it was promised and that about half of the donations that it received in Heard's name came from Elon Musk, who dated Amber after her and Johnny broke up. Amber deflected by stating on the stand that she still planned to donate all the money she promised, but that the defamation suit, which demands up to $50 million in damages got in the way. Quote, I still fully intend on honoring all of my pledges. I would love him to stop suing me so I can. Interestingly, there are about four years between Amber and Johnny divorcing and the Sun libel trial, of which she was not being sued for. Number nine, the makeup palette. Previously, in the opening statement back in April, while discussing how she used to cover her bruises from Deb hitting her multiple times, Amber's attorney held up a Milani Cosmetics color correcting makeup palette. She stated that Amber had used this makeup palette to hide her bruises after the onslaught delivery by Johnny to make sure that no one discovered her bruises and lesions. But in a now viral TikTok video, Milani Cosmetics themselves refuted this whole statement, saying that their color correcting palette came out in 2017, a full year after Amber had gotten a restraining order against Johnny. Johnny Depp supporters online used the issue to allege that Amber was lying about actually being hurt by Johnny during their relationship. But now that Amber is back on the stand, she was shown the same Milani Cosmetics palette and asked if she used it. She said she used something similar to it. Quote, this is what I was talking about as a color correction palette, as a color correction kit. This is not obviously the exact one I used to carry, but I used to carry something like this with me all the time. Amber told the court that the makeup she did use, she referred to as her bruise kit. She also explained that she would ice her injuries to reduce swelling, apply cream, and then put the makeup on. Quote, the idea is that you want to counteract whatever color you're working with on the bruise. So first day of bruising, well, the immediate is red. The red is what shows up right away. So you want to go with the opposite on the color wheel by dabbing a bit of green or something to counteract the red. While the attorney for Amber previously insinuated that the Milani Cosmetics palette was the one that Amber specifically had used, once the makeup brand refuted the claim, it was changed to one like this. Number eight, sharing embarrassing photos of Johnny. During her testimony yesterday, Amber was being cross-examined and asked about whether she sent a photo to a friend of Depp sleeping after allegedly having consumed substances. Johnny's attorney characterized the photo of Depp asleep with ice cream spilled on him as embarrassing and asked whether Amber had sent it to anyone. Amber stated that she didn't think so. But very quickly, the attorney showed a screenshot of a text message that Amber sent to her best friend. The message attached to the picture reads, quote, this is what I'm dealing with. When she was shown the text messages between her and her friend of the photo of Johnny debilitated with the caption, this is what I'm dealing with, Amber's attorney asked, quote, and this is you supporting Mr. Depp? Amber rebutted, stating, quote, this is me getting support from my best friend. I also need support. Number seven, never hitting Johnny Depp. Yeah. At the beginning of the trials, Amber continually pressed the alleged fact that she never hit Johnny. She said that she was solely the victim to his harm and that she never raised a finger against him. We found that not to be true because the instance with the stairs became apparent. During one of their fights, Amber ran up the stairs with her sister. Allegedly, Johnny raised his hand to her sister who got between the couple and Amber hit Johnny to defend her. So the story changed from Amber has never hit Johnny to Amber has hit Johnny once in defense of her sister who was clearly in a position of danger. According to Amber, her panic and fear for her sister came from the rumor she heard that Johnny had pushed his ex-girlfriend, Kate Moss, down the stairs during one of the fights back in the 90s. The rumor is absolutely not corroborated and could push the court in the favor of Johnny from Amber. Number six, hit Johnny Depp once. Okay, so the story changed from Amber has never hit Johnny to now Amber has only hit him once in defense of her sister. But that may not be entirely true because Amber was asked about a now viral audio clip recording of her on the phone with Johnny. In the clip, she states, quote, I was hitting you. I was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. You're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. After she was asked about the clip, Amber changed her story once again to now admitting that she had hit him, but that it was in a provocative manner during a moment of intimacy. She said that Depp hit her in 
bed, and so she hit him back reactively. On the stand, she states, quote, I hit his arms, his body as he was trying to prevent me from closing the door. I knew what he would do to me when he got to the other side. So now the story has gone from never hitting Johnny to only hitting him once to now twice. Number five, adjusting her timeline. While on the witness stand on Monday, Amber spent the first few minutes changing her story and adjusting her testimony, telling the court that the alleged harm from Johnny began earlier than she previously thought. Quote, I'm embarrassed to say I think I would have liked to believe that the period of time in which I fell in love with Johnny, in which we fell in love and he was sober and he wasn't violent to me, lasted longer than it did. She said following a review of therapy notes, she recalled earlier moments of alleged harm that dated back as early as 2012, rather than her previously stated 2013. When asked by her attorney why she didn't recall these moments, Amber stated, quote, Quote, that's not how my memory works. Number four, Amber not being a fan. While up on the stand, Amber spent some time describing her early days in a relationship with Johnny. She also describes what she thought of him before she got to know him. Quote, I knew who he was. I wasn't familiar, you know. I wasn't a fan of his work. I wasn't familiar with him. But then some fans found a decades old interview with Amber in which she was asked whether she was a fan of Johnny's growing up. The younger Amber says, quote, I mean, who isn't a fan of Johnny's? That's a given. He's been a cultural icon and talented actor for since I can remember. Number three, Amber leaked evidence to TMZ. Previous testimony from the original 2016 divorce proceedings from Amber are currently under scrutiny as well. Allegedly, she may have slipped up while on the stand originally. During Hurt's cross-examination of Virginia's Fairfax County Circuit Court on Tuesday, May 17th, the Aquaman star was shown footage of her 2016 deposition in which she discussed her divorce from Depp. She was heard in the video admitting that TMZ had been alerted about their divorce as well as her filing for a domestic violence restraint order against death before awkwardly covering her face with her hands. Also at the original trial, Amber stated, quote, I wanted to tell Johnny, or have him told by Jerry, the Depp's former bodyguard, or someone who knew him or was close to him. Basically, I didn't want him to find out online. I would like him to know information coming from me or coming from Jerry from me, so that he finds out about the divorce filing or my intention to do so from some other source other than TMZ, which had been alerted. Depp's lawyers then accused her of leaking the information to the press well before she officially told Johnny that she wanted a divorce. Amber fumbled through her responses, saying that she wasn't sure and that it wasn't her area of expertise. Number two, Amber's broken nose. And now another time when Amber allegedly got hit by Johnny and a day later appeared on the James Corden show looking absolutely flawless. Johnny Depp's legal team grilled Amber Heard over photos of her looking fresh faced during public appearances after allegedly being beaten up by Depp. The court was shown a clip of Amber Heard appearing on the Late Late Show with James Corden in December 2015 with no visible marks or bruises on her face. She previously told the court in her defamation trial that her makeup team had to work around the wounds and apply, quote, super heavy red matte lipstick to hide her bloodied lip. While I don't doubt the power of makeup, it's hard to hide visible swelling. Number one, Amber has never hit anyone. While Amber Heard had previously claimed that she never hurt anyone before her relationship with Johnny, which required her to fight back to escape further harm, and in an act of self-defense, Amber's past shows a very different story. All the way back in 2009, she was actually arrested and charged with hitting her girlfriend at the time, Tasia Van Rie. In the end though, charges were dropped, but this isn't where the lie comes in. The couple tried to claim that the only reason Heard was arrested was because the arresting police officer had realized that they were partners, not friends, and that the arrest motive was homophobia and prejudice. It was later found out that the officer who had arrested Heard was in fact part of the LGBTQ community herself was actually an advocate and person who fought for equal rights. The officer spoke out after this entire ordeal, saying that despite these claims against her, she arrested Amber because a violent fight occurred and that she was the one who witnessed it in the first place. So Amber directly lied under oath by claiming she was non-violent despite having a history of hitting her girlfriend in the past. And at number 10, Heard looks like she's snorting something. While Amber Heard was on the stand, it was pretty emotional. So she had some tissues nearby to dry her tears if she got emotional. At one point, she decided to blow her nose, but she did it in such a strange way that the internet believed she was actually doing something illegal. If you watch the video in slow motion, it looks like Amber uses the tissue to push something into her nose and then she snorts it. It doesn't look like she blows anything into the tissue, which is generally what they're used for. Theories then started brewing that Heard snorted a uh, white substance into her nose, but many felt it was way too much of a stretch. Then a more probable theory started circulating that Amber snorted menthol, which is a common trick that makes actors cry, especially since under the circumstance, crying would help her case in trial. And at number nine, Amber afraid of Johnny Depp. 
During the shocking trial, the couple have not had any contact. On top of that, the pair also haven't made much eye contact, mostly because Depp refuses to look in Heard's direction. Recently, while Heard was getting off the stand, Johnny was approaching it, and there was an awkward moment where they were about to cross paths. When Heard seemed to notice that it was about to happen, she looked very startled, then walked away from him. Heard looked like she was physically shrinking and terrified. Taking a step back as court officials immediately turned towards Depp and put their hands up, warning him to stay away. To make matters worse, moments before that, Heard had been testifying about Depp assaulting her with a bottle and threatening to take her life. So clearly emotions were running very high. During Heard's testimony, Depp was not paying attention, doodling and writing in a notebook. And at number 8, posed while on the stand. Another moment that's going viral online shows Amber Heard posing for a photo while on the stand. While she was talking about the time in her relationship when Johnny was detoxing, she had a tissue to her face and held it there until she saw the flash of a camera taking a picture. Even crazier, if you watch the whole clip, you can see that she doesn't even use this tissue, making it clear the whole thing was just for show. Body language expert Dr. Lillian Glass agrees, saying, quote, Yes, she posed for sure. She had no liquid in her eyes or nose, and she never blew her nose. Just put the Kleenex to her nose and kept it there. She snuck a peek at the camera to make sure they had the shot. Obviously, things like this do not make Amber Heard look good, and it makes it seem like she's doing everything possible to get good press. And at number 7, stole lines from the talented Mr. Ripley. Another claim that went wild on social media was that Amber Heard copied the main stories from her testimony from TV shows and movies. At one point, a side-by-side -side comparison of her transcript compared to the script from the talented Mr. Ripley was posted on Twitter, making it seem like she copied the movie script word for word. But when you actually compare the lines from the movie and what Amber said, you can see that it's not a direct copy like it was claimed. If anything, the storytelling is very similar, but that could just be a coincidence. Depending on what side you're on in this case, you'll probably see what you want to see, but it's not nearly as compelling as the internet made it seem before. And at number 6, Inconsistencies in Her Story since the internet is mostly on Johnny Depp's side in things, after Amber Heard took the stand, the internet immediately started dissecting her testimony. Viral TikToks even show people acting out her retelling of events, and it makes literally no sense. In one TikTok, the audio hears Amber claiming that she was sitting on the edge of a couch, then she says how she was on the floor looking at how dirty the rug is, painting the picture that her version of events makes no sense. A tweet breaking down another event said, quote, I walked out of the bedroom and he slapped me in the face. I turned around to face him and I said, Johnny, you just hit me. The user pointed out that you can't be slapped by someone and then turn around to face them. Halfway number 5 forces herself to cry. While Amber was on the stand, she was talking about some very traumatic moments in her past and getting somewhat emotional. At some point, it looked like she was getting over-emotional in an attempt to make herself cry. For the longest time, it did not work, and she looked like she was in pain trying to get herself to cry for the jury. Many online were joking that it was the best acting performance she'd given in her life. And at number 4, ACLU Donation one of the worst cases of Amber Heard lying is in regards to her donations to the ACLU, since it's so easy to get to the truth. During her divorce proceedings, Amber went on record stating that she would donate the proceeds from her divorce to Children's Hospital of LA and the ACLU within 10 years. During the recent trial, the ACLU says that she gave them less than half of her $3.5 million pledge. An executive from the company, Terrence Doherty, said that the nonprofit received four donations in Amber's name so far, totaling only $1.3 million. Only $350,000 from her directly, Johnny Depp then wrote a check for $100,000, and Amber Heard asked for that money to be credited to her. The organization also says other payments included $500,000 from a donor-advised fund at Vanguard and $350,000 from a donor-advised fund at Fidelity. The ACLU believes a large portion of this money came from Elon Musk, Heard's former boyfriend. And at number 3, Heard copying Depp's outfits. One strange thing that's been noticed during the trial is that Amber seems to copy Johnny's outfits in court. Dr. Shannon Curry took the witness stand and testified that she diagnosed Amber Heard with two personality disorders, and one could cause her to mimic her ex-husband Johnny Depp's wardrobe choices. Dr. Curry claimed that Amber's disorder may cause her to, quote, take on the identity of the people they are spending time with because it's comforting. At that point, fans already started to notice that she was copying Depp's outfits, with some believing it's a tactic to intimidate him. Many fans on Twitter are pointing out the strange coincidence, pointing out how Heard will copy the color and style of whatever Depp wears the next day. And at number 2, hides a water bottle. There might not be anything wrong with this one, but it's definitely strange. So while Amber Heard is in court, she's talking to her lawyers, and then she goes to unscrew a water bottle. Pretty normal stuff. 
But then one of the courtroom cops comes over and walks by, and for some reason, Amber quickly screws the cap back on and hides it in her jacket pocket. This bizarre moment is leading some to believe that the contents of the bottle were definitely not water. The caption on the video read, quote, Amber Heard and her deeply sus moment in court with her water bottle. And finally, number one, hid a smile. There have been a few moments in court that have just not seemed to add up. A few involve Amber Heard laughing or hiding a smile either while she is testifying or while Johnny Depp is. A body language expert did an entire 30 minute video on this topic, breaking down one specific moment where Amber Heard's facade cracked, and she showed her true emotion. In the thumbnail he wrote, quote, One smile exposed her. In the intro clip we see Johnny recalling a moment with Amber and he says, quote, It just didn't happen. As the camera pans to Amber, we see a brief smirk that she quickly conceals. The expert notes in the video that he believes she bit the inside of her cheek to conceal the smile. She then blocks her mouth as a reflex to again hide her emotion. The expert continues that it's shocking that she would decide to laugh in that moment when she sees her former partner breaking down on the stand. And at number 10, heard blamed for poop in their bed. One of the strangest and most baffling things about this case is the fact that someone pooped in Johnny and Amber's bed, and most signs point to Amber. Apparently after he and Heard had a fight, he decided to leave for the night and come back in the morning when he assumed that she was not going to be there. However, before he made it back, his maid texted him that there was poop found on his side of the bed, with the maid even including a picture. Johnny then texted Amber about the mess, and she tried to blame it on their dogs. Depp stated that their dogs were way too small to produce something that large. Heard kept denying that she had anything to do with it, but Deb is convinced it either came from her or one of her friends. And at number 9, disappointed about weight comment. This is one of the many times that Johnny Depp has poked fun at his situation with Amber Heard. While Depp was on the stand and being questioned by one of Heard's lawyers, the lawyers were trying to establish that since Depp is larger than Heard, it would be easy for him to get physical with her. The lawyer then asked Johnny Depp, quote, Now, you're a lot bigger than Amber Heard, correct? Physically. Depp nonchalantly replied, quote, I wouldn't say that. When you see this testimony lined up with Amber Heard's experience, expressions at that time, you can see that she did not take that comment very well, and clearly Amber took it as an insult. And in number 8, confess to hitting Depp. Even though Amber is trying to make it seem like she was not the aggressor in her altercations with Johnny, in court we heard clear audio recordings where we saw Amber confess to hitting Depp during a fight. From the audio, it seemed like in that instance, Amber was the aggressor, and Depp was only using self-defense against her. She is quoted saying, quote, I didn't punch you by the way, I'm sorry that I didn't hit you across the face in a proper slap. I was hitting you, I was not punching you, you're not punched. Depp then meekly replied, quote, Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. This recording is responsible for many people switching sides in this case and believing Johnny Depp over Amber. In a number 7, Dorman Testimony One of the most talked about people during this trial has been witness Alejandro Romero. During his pre-recorded testimony, he broke the law multiple times, shocking the jury and getting a chuckle out of Johnny Depp. After the video cut, the judge was lost for words, saying it was a quote, first. Romero was the doorman at the apartment where Amber and Johnny lived, and he came to their home to check on her when she believed an intruder was breaking into her home. However, he believed it was just a dog scratching at the bottom of her door. Romero looked frustrated throughout the questioning, saying on multiple occasions that he just wants to be done with this trial forever. I mean, don't we all? At one point, Romero even started driving while still talking to the lawyers. To make things even funnier, he vaped while driving and speaking to the judge clearly showing just how little he cares about being there to testify in this case. Immediately after his testimony started going viral, with Romero even gaining over 20,000 followers on social media. And at number 6, My Dog Stepped on a Bee One of the most viral moments in court was when Amber was describing a time that her and Johnny got in a physical fight. Then out of nowhere, she just says, quote, My dog stepped on a bee, and then winces. Like she's trying to force herself to cry, but couldn't. And of course, the internet went wild with that comment, and it quickly became a viral TikTok audio sound. Some users are even adding more onto this sound, continuing it by saying, quote, My dad has to pee. I forgot my house key. My child spilt my tea. <laughs> it's hard not to laugh, to be honest. The internet is labeling this yet another time that Amber Heard was a terrible actress. Halfway number five, lawyers asked inappropriate questions. Of course, it's a lawyer's job to get down to the truth, so it's not out of the question to assume some uncomfortable questions will be asked. At one point, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were living in Australia while Depp was filming a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and Amber alleged that Depp tried to urinate in the foyer of their house. Depp's bodyguard Malcolm Connolly was on the stand, and during cross-examination, Heard's team asked him if he witnessed Depp urinating in the foyer of their residence at the time. Connolly confirmed he heard noises inside the home, and that when he entered, he saw Depp in the foyer. When pushed again to answer, the bodyguard said no, prompting those in the courtroom to laugh, including Depp. The lawyer continued, quote, Mr. Depp had his penis 
freaked out, didn't he? Before being interrupted by an objection. The bodyguard denied it and claimed he would have remembered if he saw it. Depp tried to contain his laughter. And at number four, Milani Cosmetics contradicts Amber's lawyer. Obviously, this trial is insane, but I believe there has never been a time before where a makeup company came up to contradict what was said in court. During her trial, Amber's lawyer stated that Amber would walk around with makeup constantly in case she ever needed to cover a bruise that Johnny had given her. In court, the lawyer held up Milani Cosmetics all in one correcting kit while telling the jury how Heard concealed alleged bruises on her face. Although it's important, the lawyer never claimed that Heard used that specific product. Milani then clapped back in a TikTok video showing that the product held up in court was not released until 2017, one year after Heard filed for divorce. So there is no way Heard could have been covering bruises with that makeup. Heard's team responded by backtracking and saying that they never said it was specifically that product used. And at number three, Kate Moss questioning. Last week while Heard was testifying, she was recalling an incident where Johnny allegedly got physical with her sister Whitney. And during the testimony, she brought up model Kate Moss, to which Depp's team celebrated. Kate Moss and Depp used to date decades ago when they were both very young, and Heard alleged that Johnny also got physical with Moss while they were together, specifically claiming that he pushed Moss down a flight of stairs. In court, Heard said about her sister's altercation with Johnny in 2015, quote, she threw herself in the line of fire. She was trying to get Johnny to stop. Her back was to the staircase, and Johnny swings at her. I don't hesitate and wait. I instantly think of Kate Moss and stairs. Court footage then shows Depp's lawyers quietly celebrating after hearing Moss's name. We can assume that the court did not allow evidence or testimony from Moss to be allowed, but now that Heard has opened the door to that altercation, Moss may be asked to testify. Since Johnny clearly does not agree this altercation with Moss happened, Depp's team believes it will once again prove Amber's lies. And at number two, a lawyer objects to own a question. Easily the most embarrassing moment from one of Heard's lawyers was when he objected to his own question. Attorney Adam Nadelhoff made a strange error while he was asking questions about a fight that left Johnny with a severed finger. While the lawyer was questioning Ben King, Depp's house manager, he asked, quote, you didn't know what could cause damage to Mr. Depp's hand while you were there on March 8th. Correct? The lawyer asked. King then answered the question by stating a doctor told him that Depp sustained an injury to one of his fingers. Then, in an attempt to stop King from continuing his testimony, the lawyer objected, saying, quote, uh, objection, hearsay? For a moment, everyone was kind of confused until the judge stated, quote, wait, you asked the question. Next question. Awkward. And finally, number one, can't add. Being a lawyer has little to do with mathematics, but you'd assume a group of people that educated would be able to do simple math, right? Well, you'd be wrong. One of the funniest moments captured was not actually during the trial, it was to do with pre-trial details to be sorted out. The judge was on the stand telling each side how much time that they will have in court, stating that once they do go over time, she will stop them regardless of the line of questioning. At one point, she breaks down the exact hours and minutes that each side still has in court. And for some reason, Amber Heard's lawyers kind of object and make it seem like the math does not add up. The judge then breaks down the math and asks the lawyer if she got a different number. After a very awkward silence, someone comes in and lets the judge know that their math adds up. The caption on the clip read, Quote, Judge Penny Ascart has the patience of an actual saint. Amber Heard's legal team failing to do basic math. In our number 10 spot today, we have Amber filed first. This was a moment that almost slipped through my fingers as I was watching the trial. It was a moment where we learned that two months before Amber's infamous Washington op-ed was published, she initiated an arbitration against Johnny Depp for defamation. When Ms. Vasquez, Johnny's lawyer, questioned her about it, she said it was really just a letter that her team sent to Johnny's team. So why is this small detail important? Well, most people don't realize that in order for Johnny to win his case, or to most likely win his case, his team has to show that Amber expressed malice in her op-ed against Johnny. And hearing that in only two months prior to the article being published, Amber was warning Johnny that she may sue him for defamation. One could argue that her article was a direct response to it and a form of an attack on him. But all all that matters is that the jury picked up on that, and to be honest, the moment was so fast, so I wonder if they even did. In our ninth spot today, we have Smiling Amber. At this point of the trial, Johnny's lawyers played a video clip of Miss Heard's original deposition back in 2016. In the clip, Amber is being questioned in a room full of lawyers about her relationship, and then one of the infamous tapes begins to play, and we watch her listen to it along with everyone. The tape that is being played is the one where Amber and Johnny are discussing Amber kicking the door into Johnny's head. She's apologizing and saying that she never meant to, but admitting to intending to hit him when he was trying to leave. And while the tape is playing, we see Amber eating and being kind of blank faced about what she's hearing. But then she starts to smirk after looking at what seems to be a lawyer. And then as the tape continues, she starts rolling her eyes a bit and 
continues to smirk. When the tape finishes, Johnny's lawyers question her about smiling as the audio is playing and if she doesn't take beating up her husband seriously. Amber replied arguing that she was just smiling because everyone else in the room was rolling their eyes and smiling. But regardless of the reason, the clip did show a clear lack of respect for the seriousness of the conversation and as she goes on to speak about Johnny being dramatic towards the end of the clip, we are then able to once again see that she doesn't respect his feelings and has a lack of respect for the situation as a whole. In our number 8 spot today we have the tweet. Throughout the questioning, Miss Vasquez, Johnny's lawyer, asks Amber if she wants to move on from this whole situation, referring to all the drama from this relationship and to leave it in the past. As I was watching this, I was kind of wondering where is she going with this? She's asked her this a few times now. What is she trying to do? Of course, Amber replies that she of course wants to move on. Eventually my question was answered when Johnny's lawyer brought up a tweet conversation between Amber and Johnny's former lawyer, Adam Waldman. In this conversation, it begins with Adam provoking Amber about wearing makeup and she takes the bait and replies, Yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion, you will still be short. I am. Harsh. I believe that through showing this tweet, Johnny's lawyers were wanting to show that she can have a cutthroat side, but also they wanted to show that if she indeed was in the headspace of wanting to move on, she would not be engaging in petty tweets. Actions speak louder than words. In our number 7 spot today we have The Mirror. This is another one that I'm truly surprised that people aren't talking about more. In the cross examination we viewed a mirror picture from when Amber and Johnny were in Australia in 2015. The mirror photo was taken taken on the day that Johnny severed his finger and after this accident, he took to painting the walls with paint as well as this particular mirror. He wrote a few messages on the mirror and Amber took a picture of it. On this same day, Amber has alleged that Johnny injured her body with a bottle as well as beat her up. What's interesting though is that there are no pictures of her injuries. Johnny's lawyer points out that not only are there no injury photos, but you also can't see Amber in the reflection of the mirror photo. Almost as if that were intentional because perhaps she had no injuries. If you thought to take a picture of writing on a mirror, would you not think to take a picture of your injuries as well? Especially since she has taken other injury photos and documented those, and this was supposed to be a time where she was really hurt. In our number 6 spot today we have the love journal. Apparently throughout their relationship, Johnny and Amber kept a journal to which Amber called it a love journal. It was a journal where they supposedly wrote love letters to each other and what seems like also apology notes. Now, we only got to see a very small fraction of this book, three entries in fact, so it's hard to jump to conclusions and we have to understand that Johnny's lawyers want to keep painting her in a bad light as that's their job, so we really can't know if the journal was mainly love notes or apologies unless we get to read it. But certainly from the three entries that we read, the perspective we were given was that it's mainly Amber apologizing. Amber says that's not an accurate representation of the book, so fair enough, we have to to try to remain unbiased. But what was interesting is these entries took place right around the time that Amber was supposedly seriously injured by Mr. Depp and one in particular was after a supposed altercation where he hurt her again. So it is curious why she is so apologetic over hurting him when the picture that she has been painting is that Mr. Depp physically hurt her during this time. In our number 5 spot today we have changed the locks. Amber has testified that she was trying to change the locks to the penthouse apartments on May 27th, 2016. But it was revealed in the cross examination that she actually attempted to change the locks and supposedly did change them on May 22nd, 2016. Why is this important? Ms. Vasquez, Johnny's lawyer, said, But you changed the locks to the penthouses on May 22nd, 2016. To which Amber replied, I attempted to. Which led Johnny's lawyer to reply, that's why you felt comfortable having James Franco over the evening of May 22nd. To which Amber played off and said, I do not know when James came over. Oh, that's convenient. It's only on the elevator footage that the lawyers have shown a few times in court. And also, isn't it curious that she seemingly remembers every detail of things that happened in 2012 all the way to 2016, including describing her friend's shirt being a mesh shirt in one of her parties. 
but she cannot remember when James came over, even though it was right after the supposed last injury that she endured from Johnny. Then Johnny's lawyer proceeds to show Amber the infamous clip of her getting cozy in the elevator with a date and timestamp on it. Right after, seconds after this clip is shown, she is asked if it's past 11 p.m. at night, and Amber replies, I'm not quite sure of the time. It, it, it looked like that. Oh, Amber. Just tell the truth. Everyone saw the timestamp only one second ago. This was not a good moment for her. In our number four spot today, we have Sleeping Johnny. Lots of photos of Johnny allegedly passed out on the floor or in a chair were shown to the court. Apparently, Johnny would just nod off, and so Amber said she took these photos because he wouldn't remember, and she wanted to show him that it had gotten that bad. She took multiple pictures, including one of him sleeping in a chair on vacation on his island, and she testified that he wasn't sleeping, he was nodding off. There was a difference. She agreed that these photos were embarrassing, especially a picture where Johnny was asleep and ice cream was all over him. Amber agreed that it was embarrassing to look at and that it shows that this is someone that clearly needs help. This was a seemingly caring moment that only lasted for a minute before Johnny Depp's lawyer showed a text message combo with one of Amber's friends, and this combo revealed that even though Amber knows this picture is embarrassing and sad to see, she sent it to her friend anyway, telling her friend that, quote, this is what she has to deal with. Not her most compassionate moment. In our number third spot today, we have no records. With all the injuries that Amber Heard allegedly had throughout her long relationship with Johnny, she weirdly has no medical records or dental records. When asked about the dental records and whether she had to see an oral surgeon or get dental work due to the injuries, she replied that she never needed to. Then when asked if she had any medical records showing that she required reconstructive work, she replied, I never required reconstructive work, so there would be no records. But what was interesting is that she spun her reply in a way to seem like, well, duh, obviously, if I didn't need surgery, then there would be no records, duh. But what she was doing was taking the attention away from the fact that clearly she either A, didn't have very bad injuries, unlike what she described she had, otherwise she would have had to go to the doctor, at least for the possible broken nose, and the bottle put inside her to make sure there's no further damage. Something that someone who wants to be a future mother would care about. Or B, the point of perhaps she had no injuries and that's why there are no medical records. In our number two spot today, we have no pictures. Pictures were shown of Amber at an event the day after Mr. Depp allegedly whacked her on the face so hard that she thought her nose was broken. The scene goes as follows. <clears throat> Johnny's attorney said to Amber, your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Miss Heard? Amber replies, I'm wearing makeup. Johnny's lawyer says, your nose doesn't appear to be injured in any of these pictures, does it, Miss Heard? To which Amber replied, that's why I'm wearing makeup. <laughs> Johnny's lawyer says, right, and makeup covers up swelling, right? To which Amber replied, makeup will not cover up swelling, but ice will. Johnny's lawyer says, ice will cover up swelling? <laughs> To which Amber replied, Ice reduces swelling. Normally the swelling after that kind of injury is not as bad as you can imagine, and for me it wasn't that bad. I have the picture of it underneath the makeup. That's how I know how to reference it. Johnny's lawyer replied, A picture that you haven't produced to this jury? Amber replied, I, I have, I produced everything. The scene went on like this only for Amber to claim that she would like to show this alleged picture, but it is not her job. Once again deflecting the blame onto her lawyers, which honestly, who knows how the jury thinks. And I bet in her mind, all she's thinking is, as long as the jury believes me, that's all that matters. In our number one spot today, we have the bed. This is the most interest. This is the most interesting moment that I'm shocked people aren't talking about more. This is the point in the cross examination when Johnny Depp's lawyer got Amber to confirm that she testified that on December 15, 2015, Johnny broke the bed. More specifically, he broke the bed frame with his boot while they were in an altercation. Amber Heard agreed to speaking of this. Johnny's lawyer then proceeded to show a picture that Amber took that depicted the broken bed. Amber confirmed that this is indeed the picture that shows the broken bed in her story. But then the attorney scrolls into the photo and shows a pocket knife literally on the bed. Something that is way more likely to break the wooden bed frame than a boot. Of course Amber stumbled for a second and then proceeded to indicate that she did not damage the bed with that knife, but Johnny's boot did while he was punching her. But then Camille, Johnny's lawyer, asks Heard about how she testified that there was blood all over the pillows and proceeded to ask Amber where the pictures were for that. And Heard admitted to not taking a picture of the pillows. And at number 10, lawyer objects to 
you own question. Easily the most embarrassing moment from one of Heard's lawyers was when he objected to his own question. Attorney Adam Nadelhaft made a huge error while he was asking questions about a fight that left Johnny with a severed finger. While the lawyer was questioning Ben King, Depp's house manager, he asked, quote, You didn't know what could cause damage to Mr. Depp's hand while you were there on March 8th, correct? King answered the question by stating a doctor told him that Depp sustained an injury to one of his fingers. Then in an attempt to stop King from continuing his testimony, the lawyer objected, saying, uh, objection hearsay? For a moment everyone was confused until the judge stated, quote, wait, you asked the question, next question. Awkward. And at number 9, can't do math. One of the funniest moments captured was not actually during the trial, but it was to do with the pre-trial details to be sorted out. The judge was on the stand telling each side how much time they will have in court, stating that once they go over time, she'll have to stop them regardless of the line of questioning. At one point, she breaks down the exact hours and minutes each side still has in court. And for some reason, Amber Heard's lawyers kind of object and make it seem like the math does not add up. The judge then breaks down the math and asks the lawyer if she got a different number. After a very awkward silence, someone comes in and lets the judge know that her math adds up. The caption on the video reads, quote, Judge Penny as card has the patience of an actual saint, Amber Heard legal team failing to do basic math. And at number 8, Milani Cosmetics contradicts Amber's lawyer. During her trial, Amber Heard's lawyer stated that Amber would walk around with makeup constantly in case she ever needed to cover a bruise that Johnny had given her. In court, the lawyer held up Milani Cosmetics all in one correcting kit while telling the jury how Heard concealed alleged bruises on her face, although it's important the lawyer never claimed that Heard uses that specific product. During the trial, her lawyer held up the makeup and said, quote, this is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship with Johnny Depp. She's an actor. Do you honestly think she would have left her apartment ever without makeup? Do you think she would ever have wanted other people to see her bruises and cuts? This is what she used. She became very adept to it. Lonnie clapped back in a TikTok video, showing that the product held up in court was not released until 2017, one year after Heard filed for divorce. So there's no way that Heard could have been covering up her bruises with that makeup. A source close to Heard told People, quote, Heard's lawyer was using an example of the kind of makeup that she used. In at number seven, muffin questioning. During the trial, one of Johnny Depp's witnesses was a psychologist named Dr. Shannon Curry. Dr. Curry's job was to come and testify about the mental state of both of the parties and to determine any psychological issues either party possessed. During her testimony, she stated that Amber had multiple psychological issues and made Amber seem like the abusive party. So to get back at the doctor, Heard's lawyers tried to discredit her. At one point, the lawyers kept asking about was some muffins that Dr. Curry brought to the meeting with Amber. Since Dr. Curry's husband got these muffins, Heard's lawyers wanted to see if Dr. Curry told her husband that a confidential celebrity client, aka Amber, was coming to see her that day. After a long line of useless questioning, Dr. Curry cleared everything up, saying that her husband bought the muffins but he did not know who they were for. The lawyer was stunned and had to take a few moments to come up with a new question. In at number 6, Kate Moss questioning. Last week while Heard was testifying, she was recalling an incident where Johnny allegedly got physical with her sister, Whitney. And during the testimony, she brought up model Kate Moss, to which Depp's team celebrated. Kate Moss and Depp used to date decades ago when they were both very young, and Heard alleged that Johnny also got physical with Moss while they were together, specifically claimed that he pushed Moss down a flight of stairs. In court, Heard said about her sister's altercation with Johnny in 2015, quote, she threw herself in the line of fire. She was trying to get Johnny to stop, her back was to the staircase, and Johnny swings at her. I don't hesitate and wait, I instantly think of Kate Moss and stairs. Court footage then showed Depp's lawyers quietly celebrating after Heard mentions Kate Moss. We can assume that the court did not allow evidence or testimony testimony from Moss to be allowed, but now that Heard has opened the door to the altercation, Moss might be asked to testify. Since Johnny clearly does not agree this altercation with Moss happened, Depp's team believes it will once again prove Amber's lies. Halfway number 5, Heard copying Depp's outfits. One strange thing that has been noticed during the trial is that Amber seems to copy Johnny's outfits in court. Dr. Shannon Curry took the witness stand and testified that she diagnosed Amber Heard with two personality disorders, one that could cause her to mimic her ex-husband Johnny Depp's wardrobe choices. Dr. Curry claimed that Amber's disorder may cause her to quote, take on the identity of the people they are spending time with because it's comforting. This testimony came at an interesting time because fans have been pointing out that Heard seems to copy whatever Depp wears in court. One fan on Twitter wrote, quote, 
when Johnny wore a grey suit, the next day she wore the same thing. Then he wore a Gucci ensemble, and then she wore it the next day. If the public noticed this was a pattern, Heard's lawyers should have immediately stepped in and told her to stop wearing them. In a number 4, pathetic attempt to discredit Johnny. During one portion of the trial, Johnny Depp was on the stand and Amber Heard's lawyers could ask him whatever they wanted. At one point, the lawyer tried to make a point about Depp's damaged reputation, giving Depp a number of headlines to read, with them all painting a picture of Depp as out of control. The articles called him in crisis, claimed he was losing money, and also claimed his addiction to drinking was ruining his life. The lawyer read a number of these headlines, until Depp himself pointed out that all of these sites are trashy gossip sites, and they do not print the truth. Depp even called his line of questioning a quote, pathetic attempt. Near the end of the clip, we see Depp start to make fun of these articles, and the lawyers were trying to paint them as real evidence. In a number 3, Depp calls out lawyers for hearsay comments. If you've watched even a little bit of this trial, you know that Amber Heard's lawyers love objecting on the grounds of hearsay. According to Cornell Law School, hearsay is an out of court statement offered to prove the truth of whatever it asserts. These statements are inadmissible as trial evidence because there's no actual proof to back them up. Basically, during the entire trial, anything that a person did not say or hear directly is objected to, and it gets a bit annoying after a while. And social media has been mocking her lawyers for the constant objections. While one of her lawyers were telling Depp to read off articles, the lawyer read one title saying, quote, A year and a month before Amber published the op-ed, headline, Johnny Depp allegedly showed up drunk to movie premiere, reports say. Depp then quickly responded, quote, Reports say, this is hearsay, is it not? Your favorite word. In a number two, asked inappropriate questions. Of course it's a lawyer's job to get down to the truth, so it's not out of the question to assume some uncomfortable questions are asked. At one point, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were living in Australia while Depp was filming a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And Amber alleged that Depp tried to urinate in the foyer of her house. Depp's bodyguard Malcolm Connolly was on the stand, and during cross-examination, Heard's team asked him if he witnessed Depp urinating in the foyer of their residence at the time. Connolly confirmed he heard noises inside the home, and that when he entered, he saw Depp in the foyer. When pushed again to answer, the bodyguard said no, he did not see him try to urinate prompting those in the courtroom to laugh, including Depp. The lawyer then continued, quote, Mr. Depp had his pee out, didn't he? Before being interrupted by an objection. The bodyguard denied it and claimed he would have remembered if he saw it. Depp then tried to contain his laughter. And finally, number one, stupid objections. I talked before about how Heard's lawyers object to ridiculous things, but this is probably the most insane. So I assume that everyone knows that Johnny Depp's most well-known role is playing Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean, but maybe Amber Heard's lawyers did not know that. During a line of questioning, Heard's lawyers were speaking to some sort of studio executive or talent manager, and they were speaking of the sixth movie in the franchise. Depp was set to play the lead role in that movie like he had for the five before it, but he was cut from the movie in the midst of the Amber Heard drama. When Depp's lawyers asked the witness what role Depp would play in the sixth movie, Heard's lawyers objected, citing hearsay. Are we surprised? The judge allowed the question, and the answer was none other than Captain Jack Sparrow. Again, are we surprised? Like, we know that's who he plays. 